Welcome back to the show, everybody. Mr. Pop Dat Thang is in the building. I am, of course, the one and only Triple the G, Yo D. Always surrounded by my family, the squadron, and you. Yes, you. You're live right here with us, right here on Team Jeff TV. And yo, welcome to the dub, dub, Uncle Triple. Welcome you live right back to the LAB, right here on Team Jeff TV, baby. And before we do anything else, we have got a lot of 2010 to 2019 business to handle because I guess I'm supposed to choose one fighter to rule them all or something like that. But I'm me, so I'm not going to do what y'all do at all in general, period. Because, see, the thing is, is that I tried to sit down because I had a little time, you know what I'm saying, because I've had some things I've had to take care of, to really sit up here and think about this video as I sit here and record it right now. And it was at some point I realized, why do why choose? Why choose? Is that every fighting game especially when it's in our own way. And I don't want to sit up here and I don't want to put numbers and distinguish one from the other. But I know what I want to do, though. There are fighters from last decade that need to be highlighted for what they've done, what they represent, and how they mean something in the here and now. So what we're going to be doing all year, because this just ain't no video I'm going to be making through January. Hell no. No, we just going to be highlighting fighters because there are stories that need to be told. And honestly, truth, there are stories that I need to write because there are a lot of fighters in that last decade. I didn't even get a chance to touch for one reason or another, whether because I didn't make the time like I was supposed to or that I played it for a little bit. But I think there's something there that's left for me to discover or I just didn't at all. And I don't want to sit up here and be like, well, this is the number one and this is number two. And now nah, if I haven't sat up here and gave every last fighter a shot, but even giving through that while I was sitting in my head deliberating, there were a couple of games that rose above the others, the ones that I did get a chance to experience, that I did get a chance to get deep into and engross and love those games. So don't be surprised when those stories get told first before we get to the ones where we experience something new. Because I want to I wanna do the best I can for that last decade stuff to clear my palate, to clear myself to give myself room to absorb all that stuff that I missed while getting ready for the influx of what's coming because I feel that's only fair. Even given all of this, through all the deliberation and all the thought in my head, is that there's only one place that we can technically start with telling the story about fighting games throughout the decade. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you live. Smash cut right here to a Capcom logo. Yeah, we're starting right here. We're starting with if I was going to give a number one to any game that came out between 2010 and 2019, it is Tazanova versus Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. Because when I really sit up and I think about it, and my deliberation process of it all, it's this. I haven't spent any more time with any game in the past decade than I have with Tatsu Knuckle vs. Capcom Ultimate All-Stars. This time does not include any time that I spent with Cross Generation of Heroes. This doesn't include all the lab time that I put in with Kamen Rider Super Climax Heroes. Because that was a game that came up in my list, but I kind of understood I couldn't give that fighter of the decade if all I did was study it for years. So it's not the full thing. It's like there were other games that I experienced that, yeah, that are wonderful. Things that we're going to get to later. It's like if Lucia had came out four years earlier in Street Fighter V and she was that amazing, we would be taking a look at a different game right now. But we're not. Let's just, let me just be for real. If, if, we gonna sit, if I'm going to sit up here and I'm going to rap with y'all. When I was on the internet all those years ago, when I start playing, when I start featuring this game as a part of the Gradle Chronicles and things like that, when I was sitting up here saying the better versus game of the generation, at first I was saying it to be ironic. Because here's the truth. 
Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and an extension Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 are better games than this. Because they had this in Cross Generation of Heroes to refer to. Because when you really think about standard bearers, is that you don't get anything without Street Fighter 4 and Cross Generation of Heroes because that was, you want to call it the uprising of the Dark Ages because when I took a look, and I did this, and I took a look to see when things came out, is that we knew Street Fighter 4 was coming out. So Street Fighter 4 dropped an arcade in July 2008. 2008. A, a week and a half before Street Fighter 4 came out in arcades in Japan, we the, the the bomb got dropped about cr a cross generation of heroes and how hyped we all were that yo that Street Fighter 4 then done this to open up a way for the Versus series to come back because Marvel 2 was that standard bearer and it took it but cross generation of heroes to me personally really set us on a new course and path of where that we ultimately get to and to appear here now in the year 2020 we finna go to training mode because you know that that's just what we do and i forgot i'm using a thing so i'm pressing the wrong buttons and stuff but you know what let me just take it to first and i keep pressing this button oh well i'll press the right button this time so let's see where do we want to go where my, where my stage at that go temple moonlight oh boy man I have spent so much time on this character. Select screen is insane. Just, just, for, yes. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just want to choose my squad. Like, this is one of many because the majority of my teams in this game revolve around the June nucleus. Because why would you not want June the squad? Because of things. But regardless of that. To sit here now at this juncture staring at this character select screen and understanding how we ended up here is that I kind of dropped this hand a couple of days ago when I talked about the Cyber Blue for Tyson Uncle versus Calcom move, move list thing, but that's a whole nother conversation I decided not to have with y'all because it's not as important as I thought it was. But if you want to know about it, let me know and we'll talk about it. But given all of that. Like I said, if I'm finna if I'm finna give a fighter the, the, the decade stamp, it's, it's this one. If you if you get if 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 it's gun to head, make choice, it's this game. This game means so much to me. And in also that cross generation of heroes, which we're also going to cover because if for nothing else we need to play an arcade run with Hakusho Damo because he's the character they got axed and it's a shame because here's the truth there's the next game that I know is going to come in this series is a game that suffered a similar problem that this one did this game well actually let, let's put it this way cross generation of heroes was what it was and I really think for real that being a Wii exclusive hurt it just a little bit even though everybody and their mama had a Wii is that I really think that it that it's staying and, and, and to this day in the year 2020 you can only legally play this on a Nintendo console now you can still fully experience the game if you do a little work because you can still play this game online as of right now is that shout out to the big huge giant community around this game that keeps this game beating that keeps this game alive i thank you all for what it is that you have done is that when this game burst back on the scene a couple of years ago like when that weird swell and and it's like and that's a story that 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 that, that <laughs> i can't even get the words out that takes his own video but i kind of remember like 
there was that little weird down spell of, oh my god, the fighting game community is about to become them esports, bruh. And then I remember, and, and I remember this, I, I couldn't tell you what tournament it was, but I know Yikes and um Yikes was on the mic. And and it's like and it, and it's just like he was he was he was clowning. He was throwback clowning. And it's like it was him and saving them, and they were, it was just it was just clown mode, and, and I just ran. It's like just I'm, I just randomly tuned into whatever stream this is that I didn't do the research of or remember. But I remember like feeling like that old school energy and love, and then after this moment of no one gives a shit, all of a sudden things just start popping out of nowhere, and this was one of those games that just had this resurgence of interest because people decided that I'm gonna do what I wanna do, right? Because for a long while, this community was doing what it was told. Literally doing what you were told. You told to play the game that are popular. You told to to invest your time in the things that make money so that you can be successful. But now we're in 2020 and people playing what they love, and and it's, it is such a beautiful thing. And this, and I'm glad that this game got that love along with all those Super Nintendo fighters and things like that. Shout out to Sailor Moon, and Tournament Fighters, and all those games that's getting those love. Because again, y'all know me. I'm somebody. Who love what I love? You talk about you. You were listening to the man who will defend Street Fighter EX2 as EX2 Plus is the greatest Street Fighter game ever. Still, Lucia, Lucia not involved. Can we thank you? Um, Lucia not involved. I still think Street Fighter EX2 Plus is the greatest Street Fighter experience one can truly have when trying to really grasp what Street Fighter can be. Street Fighter V now, given all this promise, when I first wrote about it and understand it like how it's invasive versus Roots, how I made the dumb joke that it's the Rumblefish 3 because of what of what B skills and V triggers do. Based off what based off boost dive and stuff, because we're gonna play some Rumblefish 2. I found a way to do it. So we gonna do that. But even given all of this where we sit right now, you know. Divergence aside, I really don't think that when it comes to enjoying the thing in front of you, I haven't enjoyed anything as much as I've enjoyed playing this game. And that's the full course that's playing it, getting in the lab with it, thinking about it, theory crafting about it. That there are games where I've had highs where it's here, okay, right here, but always up here. The full, the full circle of what this game brought me. I couldn't choose nothing else. It's like, I want to say that, you know, if I'm going to be fair, that number two, the number, the, the many number twos, because there are like, I would say four, four games other than this one that could have been the number one game. But when I sat here and in my head deliberated about it and was like, I didn't want to choose one, but I got to choose one. And then I'm going to highlight everything else. I always ended up back at Ultimate All-Stars. I always ended up back here because this is the super turbo of Tossing Up versus Capcom. This is the full and realized destiny of what this game could be. A shame that a couple of months after this game came out, Marvel vs. Capcom 3 got announced and it killed this game's momentum and stopped it to a halt. Because the streets were getting what it was they actually wanted. Like, a lot of people didn't really get this a chance, and like we talked about earlier, that again, being on the We Heard It, being on the We Heard It a lot. And Capcom not really 
reading the scene at the time, even though that, yeah, later we got Marvel 2 and Marvel vs. Capcom Origins and things like that, and those things are now long gone or whatever. And, you know, you can put jo you can put JoJo's Bizarre Adventure in that hat, too, of reading the scene of this game would have been perfect for a digital release. Because, see, it would have been easier before the advent of what Dolphin can truly do for your Wii games that made it hard for people to revisit because once Waggle became in and out, people weren't hooking up Wii's to play this because at this point, we can go play the new hotness over here with those characters that I like before the advent of functions. So, it's bad timing. But again, this game had Cross Generation and Heroes had a whole year to breathe for this to exist, for then Marvel to murder its momentum. And that's what happened. I can't lie to you and tell you anything else other happened. I'm not saying it's Marvel's fault. It's not. It's just the thing was, in the meantime, in between time, because the MCU at this time was slowly forming into the Guys, the juggernaut is that it is right now in its second brand new monkey phase of all new everything. And at that time is that Marvel wasn't in the same place that it was when what? X-Men Mutant Apocalypse came out and X-Men Children of the Atom came out and things like that. But to be, it's like, it's just like again, like I said earlier, it's a couple. It, the game immediately following this in this in this feature, which I am still juggling names off of, suffered the same fate before a different reason. I don't want to sit up here and say that as a community we didn't do enough. At that time, you were just doing what you knew. You were doing what you were told. Marvel vs. Capcom 3, the thing you wanted for a decade plus, is over here. Why do I want to play this game on my Wii? Why? Give me a reason why. I still feel that soul, soul and body, this game is better in spirit. Than Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. The jury's out on Marvel Infinite because this was Marvel Infinite before Marvel Infinite existed. But for again, completely, utterly different reasons, let me move this more before it go dark again, is one of the one of the games we are gonna talk about is we gonna talk about Marvel Infinite. We are because number one, I need to play the story mode, and number two, I need to get some things off my chest about that game because I really feel that this needs to be said, and I'll say it again in Marvel Infinite. It's a shame Marvel Infinite didn't get a chance to truly be what it could have been with the support that this game could use. I'm like, this game is really antiquated with the controllers you can use with it and controllers that you can actually use with it where all the buttons don't work. It's a strange thing. Indeed it is. It is a literal super strange thing that I do not get, do not understand, but at the, the, but the game this was built on in 2008, you were playing on a Super Nintendo-like controller. Arcade sticks weren't really that thought about. Like, I bought an arcade stick after I imported Cross Generation Heroes, that little small little, that small little what was that? That hoary stick, that garbageio. But man, it is what it is though. Who's the child? It's fine. Look, there is just something about the thesis and indeed antithesis of what this game is. Think about it for a second. Think about it, right? Think about the games, the game who killed this game's momentum, right? This, if you think about it, is the reverse of that. Is that when you think about it from a light bulb aha sort of sort of angle, 
if we can't get the American company that we worked with to put out these massive bangers, how about we go get Jap Japan's top heroes, right? And it's like your choices are either what we ended up with or did we, or Street Fighter or Ryu would have been would have been fighting Common Rider Black, which I would have enjoyed. Which can technically happen in Mugen, but you know, we shout to never say die to mixtape, you know what I'm saying? Gotta sit up here and do your own promotion. But anyway. This was genius. Like, I remember when that trailer came on. Like Six days after thing we probably shouldn't talk about in happy moment. I need this. I'm like this, like this, and all the stuff that was coming out about Street Fighter Four and stuff was raising my spirits because I needed it at that time. And being excited about, oh my god, like yo, the the king, the king, the king's back. The the king's back at this junction, and now we got the follow up. To this thing, the streets been fiending for forever. Again, but like I say though, I don't know if, or well, actually, I take that back. I don't know what happened. I can't tell you what happened here because I don't know. Here, here is what I know because. I'm gonna do this because I'm finna throw all of you under the bus. I'm gonna take responsibility for me. But even when it was cross generations of heroes, like I remember the night, I remember the night before it came out. Cause I've told this story before, but I figured, you know, we in this mode, I can tell it again. If I was at work, right? And I just got paid. Like, like the money hit the money hit my car on my lunch hour. I never imported and overnighted a game so fast. I was told, and I quote this by somebody. You were humming the character select theme in your sleep. That's how hype I was. That's how hype I was in the, uh, on December on December 11, 2008, waiting for this thing to show up. And that game showed up hella early through UPS. That game showed up at my door, I have to say, like, nine something in the morning, though. I'm just like, and I remember just, like, getting in the lab, and it's like, I had went that weekend, went to GameStop, got the controller, whatever. Like, I literally, like, I remember that Sunday, because shout out to Evil Freakzilla who was who was holding me down on the GameStop tip at that time. Shout out to him. Was he was like, yo man, we got these Wii sticks up here, man. You want you one? I literally went out of my way on like an alternate way to get to work to go up there, get the arcade stick, and took that stuff to work. And they literally sat it under my people. So I, I walked in, I walked in my job with a GameStop bag. I tried to put it in my locker. Box was so big it wouldn't fit. <laughs> Like, people like, man, what's that, man? Got this arcade stick. I talking over to Capcom at the crib. Like, yo, this finna be legit, boy. I remember just, like, just getting in the lab, having so much fun, and just playing through the arcade mode. Like, all the research I was doing, like, a lot a lot of the research that I did to this day that I am similarly, that I'm uncredited for to a degree, is on the SRK Wiki for this game and for Ultimate All-Stars. A lot of yeah, I wrote a lot of that stuff. It's like it's uncredited to me, but you know, I'm just telling you. You, I, I'm like, I don't even know if the forum post with all that information that I had gathered even exists because. Too long. Um, let's pick another. Let's let's go on another character. We, we can put we can put it on roll. Roll's fine. Saki's better. Okay. Yeah, you know what? Saki's great because. Bless Saki's heart. One of the reasons why that I was inspired to write that that cyber blue that cyber blue joint was because of Miss Omokame. 
I'm like, you had people who never heard of Quick Rainbow Dreams in their career. You know, you know, I, I had heard of it because I downloaded a rhyme set that had this in it and it was kind of like, man, this is a queer slash dating sim. I don't know Japanese, whatever. So I was similarly for, I was semi familiar with the character because then when I saw her in that, then I remembered, oh, she's an assistant Marvel and she's an assistant Marvel one. So, you know, is that, but you have to appreciate the chances that cross generation heroes took on characters like this. Like, when I played Cross Generation of Heroes, this was my main character. Because you got very few people on this planet who love what beautiful Joe got the opportunity to do better than I do. And and we are and we are and we are I'm like, yo, shout out man, shout out to that guy. I won't mention his name. He might ban me on YouTube. I, I don't want to get banned on YouTube. I don't want to get banned in my own comment section. But but Hideki Kamiya, you are an amazing gentleman. You know what I'm saying? Like when I used to when I used to watch his Twitter when I used to watch his Twitter feed heavy, he was in up for dropping stuff like there's a reason why I appreciate what this man do. Especially when he like, yo, one of my favorite games, one of my favorite games is uh of the story of Bubble Bobble too, so it's kind of like, yo, Rainbow, you love Rainbow Islands too? Okay, that's why you the greatest. I appreciate it, Giants. I ain't gonna lie. I, I appreciate it both, both Ivan and, and Golightan. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that they tried something new because given what type of heroes they were dealing with, you know this is what you do. And probably simply that if this was a... A superhero Tizen versus Capcom game, you would probably have a couple of Zords in here or something. So it is what it is. I'm like, when it was like, if we gonna sit up here and I'm just running through this, like if we're talking about characters like Frank and Zero and things like that, it's like when you learn what got left on a cutting room floor, when you sit back and look at things like this, because I play cross generation of heroes and I play as Hakusho and Daimon. Phoenix Wright got the same got the same exact launcher where he sneezes and you get lost. That uh, the Hakusho Shon Diamond do. So they bought a lot from this game. And it's like you wouldn't even know it because you got a, not a lot of people trying to really deep dive into where Marvel ended up and things like that. But this was nuts when they announced Zero. This this was a dumb thing because it's like, well, you were expecting a lot of things. You always wanted this. SNK gave it to you first, technically, in a way that I still to this day appreciate. But this was dumb. This was equally as such, but you you kind of knew that if you got John and you got Ken, then yeah, the only character you can really tap with a real moveset would be Joe. So it is what it is with that. We, I love my girl I Chan, but it was no secret she was the final character. Like I remember all the talk on website that will not be named about who it was. I'm like, my first thing was, it's like, yeah, you know it's gonna be I Chan. It, it makes sense though. Like even like because every because at this juncture, everything else about this game leaked except for her. So it's like it was the thing of. You knew it was Joe. You knew D Boy was in the building, and we'll talk about we'll talk about Blade another time. We you knew about Zero and Frank West. You knew this stuff, right? I Chan was a welcome surprise in something that got ruined for people who were looking forward to the majesty and mystery of who's coming. And she's one of my favorite characters to play in this game too. And I really, I really appreciate what it is that she does bring to the table. I'm like, man, fell in love with this character in this version. I fell in love with Blade, dude. It's just like, I just appreciate what this dude does. I just do real talk. I appreciate what this character do, and and it ain't nothing left. And it's not. And I'm not sitting up here saying. That the rest of this cast are slouches. I'm just I'm not even gonna sit up here and say it's like I will say that over the years, that big old giant community we talked about earlier, they really showed me like characters like her, they got some work. It's like 
it take that? Like, I, I know that I thought I missed it in the video and didn't. I love that Sailor Moon S is so wide open now. It used to be Uranus or Catch This L. Now, everybody playing so hard and everybody got tech. That game has that game is so dumb, but it's so competitive. And looking at characters like this and and like knowing that this that that in competitive play, this whole cast get love. That's the thing that makes me happy. That that when I sit up here and I watch like all the net play tournaments and, and big things like that. You see everybody, everybody got their own little style. And it's like, it's something that I felt that because we talked about earlier about the soul, about what a game is, it's something that I felt kind of got lost in that transition to Marvel 3 where you couldn't be as expressive. That it was harder for you to stand out when it came to that. Now, I will say this though, because we're gonna talk about Marvel 3 and Ultimate Marvel 3 later in the series. Is that look at look at oh hell, we don't even gotta look at Ultimate Marvel 3 now. It's like look at Ultimate Marvel 3 a couple of years ago. The streets literally thought this end game was more ado, literally. And that there was nothing that they could stop it. And I'll never forget this conversation I had with some with some with some little less minded folk of understanding is that if that's the case, how can you stop it? It's not how can you stop it. It's how much you can evolve to figure out what the problem is from every different angle that you can approach it from. And ultimately, Ultimate Marvel 3 became this wildly expressive game work. At this juncture, because not saying that it ain't nothing on the line other than pride and things like that, but watch a watch a Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 tournament now. You ain't seeing everybody ain't got a Virgil or a Zero or playing or playing the whole DMC squad, or you got hit and miss out of this. You got characters playing people off the wall. Like characters who really wasn't really like at that time when the game was still evolving and trying to find its place. Of now people just do whatever the hell they want and rock. And it's like it's a beautiful thing to see that the game has come so far. It's wonderful to see that it's true that you get something enough time. I don't want to get this here. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you right here is fine. Is that give something enough time and it, it'll shine through. Real talk. Give it enough time and it will shine. That's all, that's all I can really say, is that I love what this game has become in the year 2020, and we only three days into it. But I know from the decade that I've spent with this video game, is that, again, I'll say it again, if I gotta, if I gotta give a number one, it's gotta be this. It's like, to the legacy and to what this game has brought to me, giving it to anything else seems seem, seem disingenuous. Because like I said earlier, and I repeat it just for the hood, and on an overall scale, with everything that I had a chance to fully get into and fully play and fully get everything out of it that I wanted to, this is a game that I feel that I have gotten everything out of it that I want to. And it's a game that I still love and come back to and still want to enjoy. There are a lot of games that I play that I get everything out of it and it's kind of like, well, I don't know if I'm trying to get more of this again. Not saying that it's a bad thing, but again, one of the, one of the great things about this series is that there are games that I haven't played enough of that I want to, that I need to put myself in there. So again, here, here's where we stand right now. As of right this moment, this is the best game that came out in, in at any date from January 1st, 2010 and December the 31st, 2019. Right now, this is where we stand. This is where we stand. It's like right now, Tossing Uncle versus Capcom Ultimate All-Star. Maybe if I go revisit a game harder and fully embrace it with a new mind 
and not having a decade of baggage, maybe the game of that, maybe the game of the decade will change. And that's why I wanted to come at it this way. Because I want to give myself the opportunity because there are games that I know I didn't play enough. There are games that I know didn't play enough. So I know that trying to make this happen was going to be wavy at best. It was going to be wavy at best and we, we just going to get through it together. I want to thank Tatsunoko versus Capcom for his sacrifice. You got a lot of games that because of Cross Generation Heroes and Street Fighter 4 for the rise up out of what you want to call the Dark Ages Ghetto. And let's just say this, and I'm going to be saying this throughout this whole feature. It was not a dark age. Tekken was still dropping. Mortal Kombat was still dropping. And Dead Alive games was coming out frequently. So it's not like it was what it was. Capcom wasn't releasing no fighting games because there wasn't no reason for them to. I'm going to go. I'm triple the guy that explains it all. Kenichi the Mighty Disciple coming soon. How about that for you? Just letting you know what it is. I'm just straight up letting you know exactly what it is. Can't do nothing other. So right now, as we stand, right now, when it comes to best fight of the decade, you're staring at it. Not saying that a lot of these episodes won't be me trying to unseat this game, no. Because a lot of this feature, for real, is much less about trying to figure out if Tosnoko vs. Capcom can hold that but more of there are things you all need to know about what happened last decade. Because game number two in this series, we need to have a real adult discussion. Because when I think about that game right now, I'm a little, I'm a little perturbed. I was perturbed then. When, when, when we talking about game number two, just to, just to, just to get you in there. I was perturbed then because of the rap the game got. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, and I feel that I'm gonna get into it when we pop that in. Is that I sit, I sit on the fence and be like, man, I don't think we as a community did enough. I don't think that game number two, we didn't do what we were supposed to do. That no matter what was ultimately done. I look at the game with like, I don't think we did enough, and there we go. And that's just what I feel. I just honestly think that we didn't do enough. This is a game that now, that that this game that had a decade, and now it, it's on, it's doing its own thing in the corner. And a lot of these games that we're going to talk about, they've accepted that they got their own universe that they roll in. They don't need to be in the same place at the same time with everything else. That the people who love it are going to cope, we're going to grab it, absorb its culture, and cultivate what's great and show you what's great about it. So you come and join in so you're not feeling left out of the fun. That's what's important. Did we um Yeah we had it we had it right here for a second. Um yeah go like that Chase balls Tip balls. Paper towel. Well, he's still good. He's just not God anymore. So it is what it is with that. It's like, man, this character. <laughs> but I, I love, I love how Gan is stupid, dumb in this game. It, 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 it makes my, it makes my heart flutter. Look, this man can transform into a car, bro. I, I'm like, what? He transformed to a car. Name, name me, well, I can name you a game where a man transforms into a car. <laughs> that game is called Fight or Fight Revenge, <laughs> which I actually have to play. I'm waiting on some tech to come in so I can actually, you know, bring you proper Sega Saturn work. But yeah, this man turned into a car. He throws a spear, got some beam. Like, all he do is put in work. Friender Gang, that's Bay, and he's Kenny Eagle. And that's the ordinary guy, and that's the world's strongest woman. And that and that is the leader of all the demon world. And here's the character from that game, you know, that game, you know, the game's main character makes you wonder what Street Fighter Six is really going to be. 
I am glad Basu got in this game, but it should have been Akira. And Akira was supposed to be in this game and probably would have been in a sequel. I really hope that Akira is part of season five of Street Fighter. I really do. No, I'm skipping characters. I, I'm like, my thing is, this this wasn't even the time where, like, cause this was Mega Man's low time at this junction. If you want to call it that, it was like the low time because Mega Man 9, let me see, Mega Man 9 would have been, Mega Man 9 was going to probably come out, Mega Man 9 came out, I want to say, let me see, Mega Man 9 came out before this, if I'm not mistaken, let me, let me get a phone, let me get a phone, because Cause I, I don't want to get that wrong, so I, I didn't think I was gonna be talking about this like that. So I'm like, I didn't prepare these notes, but that's why. But that's why it's live TV, baby. And I'm gonna do this so we don't go black. So let's see. Let's see. When did Mega Man not come out? No, Mega Man, no. What is this thing doing? Like, I'm trying to search for Mega Man 9. It's like, yo, do you want to buy the Mega Man Zero ZX collection? The answer is no. Okay. So. Yeah, this came out before Mega Man 9. This came out before the return of the Blue Bomber. According to Wikipedia, it came out September the 22nd, 2008. This game came out in December. came out December the 11th, 2008 in Japan. So, yeah. So, even though... This character is still stuck on the moon. They tried to revive this series and nothing happened. And unless we talk about another thing, the better. I think this was a great choice for a character because they could have, they could have went, they could have went, they could have went Blue Bomber. They could have, they could have went X. But I'm glad X got his own. I'm glad X when he when it was finally his turn, he got to be the central Mega Man character. No Zero had already been in a we didn't been versus Heart and Ready. Because he is zero. He, he is zero. Slice him. I really think this was a wonderful and a great choice. I love this moveset. He's a lot dirtier in the original version of the game. So it is what it is. Onamusha getting representation in a fighting game. Yes. More of this, please. You know, more of this. I'm like, yeah, I appreciate we got costumes and Street Fighter and things like that. But given the weird history that before last year when you could buy a remaster of the first video game, which I still need to play by the way, is that this was a great choice to get so in here. You know what I'm saying? I really think this was one of probably one of the best picks that's not Saki on Wakane and just put it out there. No. No, this character is not a lethal joke. She's just really, really, really damn good with the tools that they gave her, given that previously she was supposed to be a joke character in the series preceding this. So, it is what it is with that. We talked about her. Henshin and Go-Go, baby. We love Giants. I really think, while Frank is cool here, they really, they really show him love in um in the, Mar in the Marvel the Capcom series. I really think that, yo, his, the way that they really, you know, ingrain, like, what that character represents for Dead Rising, I think was a great look. I, I, li I like his moveset in this game, you know what I'm saying? And I like that they basically built off that, but Santa Pr and like expanded him in a way that really makes Frank West a great character, but he's really good at it. And there's this guy. In this game, he's a monster, but not the monster he would ultimately become, but he's really good, and that Rakuha sucks. But yeah, it is what it is. It's our chan, and you know, it is what it is. That's and you know, yeah, I, I, re I really appreciate her as a character. Crap, I do. I really appreciate her as a character. I'm like, she is one of she is one of the many one of the many um twos that Jones won. So you know what I'm saying? Like, if you guys watch a lot of the Battle Chronicles, then you know that I, I, I always have them in a black and pink matching outfits, and I'll be sitting up for putting in the work. So it is what it is. Speaking of, yeah, you know what I'm saying? We, we'll just do that for the hood. We'll, we'll just do that for the hood because we can. And I think we went over everybody. Like I, I love, I love Joe. I love, I love Joe Bird missile. It's kind of dumb. Like yo, calling the homies. I'm about to drop these missiles, and I'm like everybody else are characters that I've talked about in a previous review of this video game. But yeah, 
Right now, as it stands, this is the best fighting game of the last decade. I want to see what that decade has to offer. I do, because there are games that I did not play. There are games that should have been played. Hell, not even, we ain't even just talking about the last decade, but at least like the back half of the decade before that, there were some games that I didn't get a chance to really, really, really get into. But now the better time than ever. So, with all of that being said, all of that being said is that, yo, man, I just want to thank y'all, man, for joining me for another one. Um, I'm going to get y'all back to me. Y'all don't mind. I know y'all loving the cake, 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 or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And we're actually going to come back. We're going to actually start playing this because I actually want to play some more K mode. Like, doing some live streams and just randomly playing this or whatever. Like, you should be like, man, you should play this on Dolphin. Well, give me a computer that lets me play this on Dolphin and then we'll talk, okay? Like, I, will, I would love to sit up here, like, I have no idea where to find it now, but I remember that people was doing, like, color mods and stuff in this game. Like, Kenny Eagle was Batman, and I thought that was pretty dope. I thought Kenny Eagle was Batman was pretty dope. I have to look into that. I know somebody to ask about the current state of mods for this game, so I'll talk to that person, and if I can find a way, if I can find a way to get Dolphin working and really get some of these mods, because, yes, punch your woman. I, I want to do that for the hood, you know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. Um, let's go ahead and bring it back to me so we can get up out of here. Punch a woman. Oh, y'all ain't supposed to see that. I'm going to camera. Let me do this. Yeah, let me see. Um, no. Let's see a bit more. That's cool. That'll work. So, we begin this journey. We begin this journey to really find out like what the last decade really had to offer for fighting games. Whether that's something that I experienced, the story you need to hear, or something that just needs to be said. We are going to be going through this journey through the decade of fighting games and really trying to figure out like, what did I miss? What did you miss? What did we all miss? What was good, what was bad, what was super duper ugly and everything in between. There is one thing we do gotta do. I gotta come up with a name for this. Cause like I had a couple of names, but I'm just trying to think like I need I need something either with some good alliteration. Hmm. Super decade fighter to turbo? I don't know about that. That seems a little wordy. Hmm. hmm. I need something. We we can't leave without it. We we can't leave without it. So th this is what I'll do for you. Give me a sec. I've done this for you. I've done this for you. I put it back. I put it back on top of the cat top. So you can watch. I you can watch. I chant idol stands while I try to think of a name for this thing before we get out of here. Let me see. Hmm. Hmm. Let's see. I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking for real, like, like, yeah, I ain't leaving until we figure out something. Let me see, because I'm trying to think, like, I'm trying to think, like, some good alliteration, some wordplay, something like that. Because I want something that tells people what this project is about. And knowing that not only that is important that we. Mm. There we go. Ten years of fighting game, baby. <laughs> you know what? That's what we going for. That 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 is the that is the title right now. Ten years of fighting game, right? Ten years of fighting game. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I love that wordplay of ten years. Though I'm not gonna say that word because I don't want nobody to get mad. I don't care. Ten years of slave. But yeah, ten years of fighting game. You know what I'm saying? Ten years of fighting game. You know what I'm saying? Like I really think that that um that really gives like what it means and like. And because it, it, it's the it's the alliteration of I me, mean, so yeah. So it's like right now, ten years of fighting game. Unless I can come up with something better, so let's bring it back to me. Boop. There we go. Yeah, you gotta love that. Um, actually, we finna try something, cause you know what I'm saying. We we finna try some stuff. So give me a second, cause this this is experiments right now, cause we just live TV and whatnot. So.
<laughs> I'm back now. Yeah, because, you know, because I have to have a delay because of the capture card or whatever. So I just did this because at this juncture, the video going to be what it's going to be or whatever. And it's just an experiment to see how the video comes out. If I switch, like, the delays on the fly just to see what it do, I got to put it back because we still got more work to put in. But plenty of more show for all of y'all. So please sit back, relax, and stay tuned. Me, I'm Mr. Pop Dat. Thing, the one and the only, the triple, the G-O-D. That is, of course, me. Yo, I am Mr. C-O-R-A-C-K-C-O-C-I-N-E. Hashtag entertainment number one dope man. And, of course, no matter what decade it is, I am the baddest monster in existence. And don't you ever forget it. Always holding down my six is the famo, squish, murder, and the squadron, the congregation, and of course the Lady of Rages who bringing you this heat. Of course, Janine, Bessie, Magdalene, and of course, Miss Marcy bringing you this heat on the Unos, Doses, Thraces, and Quadros. Crimp them up. We stay winning, never losing round here. Yo. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to stay what's good with that crack. Thumbs up if you feeling it. Thumbs down if you ain't. Leave a comment if you got something you need to say to your boy. Yo, you can support this show with your cooker, 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 cash money. You can do indeedly so. You can do that via, well, I don't know, Patreon. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my main man, my partner, Hentai, Ryan Bomber, and of course, my boy, Young Money Back, my boy, Drew. You know what's good. And yo, if you want to get at me on social media, feel free to do that as well with the link down below. You. 2020 and it had to flip it on. Like, I, I forgot my own intro for half a second. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, I, I did I did the money part first, but you know what I'm saying? That's just, that just, that just spill. It just is what it is, but we we working on we we working on something right here in the lab to give you reasons that you know that you might want to contribute and bring some heat to you. So it is what it is. But yo, ten year your fighting game episode one is in the books. Tasunoko versus Capcom as of right now of this moment, greatest fighting game of the last decade. When it comes to the year 2010, 2019, Tasunoko versus Capcom. Cross gener not cross generation here, ultimate all stars. Cross cross generation here is the game that came out in 2008. And if we're gonna talk about that game, it probably wouldn't be the best fighter of the decade. There's only one game that is the best fighter of the decade that's preceding this, and you all know the answer, so we're not even gonna get into that. But seriously though, we have got plenty of more show for all of you. And I mean it. We got plenty of more show for you, and of course. We've got it right after these commercial messages. <laughs> I really hope I didn't do nothing bad to this video by making that by making that switch to that thing, but I think I've done it in a video before. But hey, regardless, the video gonna come out. It's gonna come out. But yo, we got we got plenty more episodes of Ten Years of Fighting Game. So feel free to stay tuned to the channel. Like I said, episode two will be out at a quick clip because that's gonna be more of you know what I'm saying. Trying to discuss this and see this all through. Like I said, live stream of Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. You know, we'll, we'll make that happen. Don't worry about it. More show for all of y'all right after these commercial messages. 